Hello and welcome to this new tutorial about Make Break. So today we will discuss the new camera object that has been added very recently, actually just a few hours ago, so hopefully everything will work fine. Um, so in the past there wasn't really any camera object as such, so when you were going to the 3D rendering mode, a new camera was added at the location of a viewport camera. So now the system is kind of gone. However, the first time you go to the 3D rendering mode and if you don't have any cameras in the scene, uh, the software will add one for you if you click on OK. Let's do it. So object added. If I move, if I move further away, I can see the camera that has been added here and I can also click on the camera view button. And this is the um, output. OK. So let's go back to the design mode. So I will remove this camera first and we will start fresh. So the new camera tool is on the left hand side um, here. So this is, this is this little icon, the camera. If I click on it, I've got an object which is added in the scene. I can move it around. It looks like a camera. And this object is also um, updated in real time to reflect all the settings that are located in the object panel when the camera is selected. So I can uh, spin it, I can translate it the same way as any other object in Makebricks. And I've got this little window here, which is actually a preview window, and then it shows what this camera is seeing. So if I move it around like this, you can see that it's updated in real time as well. Um, so let's see the new settings and tools that you get with this object. Uh, this is on the right hand side in the object panel. So first the name, I can change the name if I wish to. So let's call it my camera. So the new name, and the name appears on the little preview window as well. I've got a couple of tools that we're going to discuss later. Um, in the lens section, I can change between perspective and autographic. So projections are different, it changes in real time. You can see that the little shape of the camera here has changed as well. And of course, I can see something different. So for an autographic camera, I can change the scale because moving it back and forth will not change anything due to the projection type versus normal. So this is the scale, which is actually changing your viewport. Um, and then if I go in perspective mode type for the lens, which is probably the most common one that you're going to use most of the time, 99% of the time, I've got the field of view. And if I change it, I've got also the little object here, which is changing and following the value. So let's put it at 45, which is actually the same value as previously. Um, let's move it a little bit better for the next one. Um, so then the clip start and clip end. So they are the two points um, when where the camera starts and finish rendering. So everything which is before and after will not be rendered. If you go a little bit lower in the viewport display panel, you can click on limits. So it will display all of this information here. So the clipping point here, the start one is very close to the center. So this is where the line is. And then the last one is very far for now. So over there, I can change this value. So for example, here, let's put it, I don't know, 10 millimeter. And then if I start dragging, you're going to see the line moving. And then when I get inside the little guy, you can see in the preview window what it does. Let's move it back to very close. And then the end point which is same thing. So when I move it here, if the endpoint is before, I won't see anything else. So this is what it is. Let's put it very far again. You shouldn't really touch them too much unless you've got like a very small or very large model, I guess. Uh, the next one is the depth of field. So you have to activate the option if you want to use it. So this is just this checkbox here, depth of field. I click and hit on it, it's activated, and I've got a cross. This is basically the distance from the camera where everything will be on focus. So I've got a couple of tools here. So the radius is not visible in the viewport. However, this is basically the radius of uh, your camera aperture. So the wider, uh, the more blurry it's going to be, uh, and the quicker it's going to be blurry around the focus point. You can check, you can change the distance. I've got two options, so you can change here with this slider or input your own value. So you can see that the cross is moving. 
or you can actually use this tool here and pick a point. So if I pick a point here, boom, it's going to be sharp or focused in this area here. Um, pretty useful. Um, the next one, this is the viewport display. So they're basically just option to display your camera in the viewport. So the limits show, it shows uh, hide the limits and the focus cross. Um, the size, so this is basically just to see your camera. If you're very far, you can increase the size or very close, you want to make it a bit smaller. Um, no impact on the render. And in the preview, so the preview is just to see this little window here. I can deactivate everything. So now it's gone. If I reactivate it, I've got a couple of options. So the first one, the scale, I can make it bigger or smaller. And the other one, yep, yeah, like it's tiny. And the other one, this is the position. So it's basically which corner. So I've got top left, I've got top right, I've got bottom left, and I've got bottom right. So you can choose where you want to put it. The next one, this is the guides. So you've got center, thirds, and thigh. So you can select all of them in the same time or just at once. This is basically to help you uh, to do the composition of your image. So that's it for the settings. Now I've got a couple of tools. So the first one, this is select targets. So let's say that your camera is, I don't know, somewhere around here. Um, you can obviously use the gizmo to try and find the object. However, you've got another solution. So the first one is select target, so I can activate it. And I'm gonna select where my camera should point. So for example, here. And then it's back, it's centered now. So let's move it, for example, somewhere else, random place. I don't know, it's kind of lost here. And then now I'm gonna point again. So select target, and I wanna point on the face of this guy. And boom, so it's very easy. Uh, you can after uh, change also uh, using the gizmo. So I recommend to do like uh, the rough uh, position and orientation using one of these two tools, and then after refine it using the gizmo. Uh, the second one, which is the lock camera to view. So as soon as I'm gonna click on this button, the camera will be located, so the render camera will be located at the position of the viewport camera. So here we are. And now you can see it's reflected inside this little preview window. So when I move using the normal viewport control, you can see that the render camera is also following the viewport camera. So it's a good one, probably the easiest one. This is very similar to how the uh, other system was working. So when I'm happy about this location, the position, orientation, I can stop it. So now the two are decoupled, the viewport and the render. And if I move away, I can see this camera here. So now I can see that my focus point, if I want to use the depth, the depth of field, is not in the right location. So I can reuse this little picker here and then choose the head. That's where I want the sharpness to be done. And then here we are. I can just also adjust this roughly. Yeah, I'm up here about it. Perfect. I can actually add another camera if I wish. So let's put another one. So it's called camera. So my camera. And as you can see, two objects cannot share the same name. So I entered exactly the same name, but it adds actually uh, a suffix at the end just to make the difference. So same thing, I'm gonna lock it to the view. Fine, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I want, let's say, for example, something from here. Cool, and I'm happy about it. And I unlock. Fine, now I've got two cameras. So obviously the next step is to go in the render mode here. And I've got access to my two cameras. So I already have cameras. So com on the contrary of previously, when I showed you this mode, uh, no other cameras will be added because I already have at least one. In the camera tab here, I've got a little select list. So I've got the two cameras, my camera and my camera one. I can actually uh, see the view. I click on camera view and I want to see the second one. It's like, yeah, cool. I want to render the first one. So now this is exactly the same as what it was before. So you can choose like your rough floor. I want to use the backdrop. This is the one I prefer. I make it a little bit smaller, see the orientation, change the angle, and then make it wide enough to cover the whole area. And next uh, lighting, this is my favorite lighting. So let's keep it up. Let's keep it this way. 
And then, yeah, the floor, we can just change the type. Oh, let's put something else, a bit bluish, increase the roughness. Let's see what it does. And now, when I'm happy about everything, I can just click Render. And hopefully, it's going to work as planned. Model is being built. It's fine. And hopefully, yeah, it starts rendering. You can see it here in the status state. Rendering. And we're already at 34%. Uh, shouldn't be too long. Resolution is pretty low, so it's pretty quick. It would still take a good amount of time on my uh, normal work computer, but here it's very fast, and I've got my image now. That's done. Um, let's close it. Um, the same as before. You can change the width and the height, and it's reflected here directly. So let's make it very, oh, yeah, let's make it very thin. So now I can get up of a view. So this is what it looks like. I can go back to my design mode. And here you can see that the aspect ratio of a camera is actually reflected on this little icon here. And if I click on one here, the preview window has changed and it's now reflecting also the aspect, the aspect ratio of my outputs. So that's the one. Hopefully you learned a few things and you're gonna know how to use those new camera objects. It's much nicer at the end of the day than the old system where only one camera was available. Okay, thank you very much for following me on YouTube and then looking forward to another tutorial.